All right, how's it going? Decided to do a uh, little bit of a bearing spinner, you know, retention versus press fit versus, you know, what types of bearings and all this type of stuff. I know that some new folks in the group and uh, I've been on this journey kind of on my own with some help from some other community members just kind of giving me some insight but essentially I went and tried like literally every bearing I could find I bought every bearing I saw on eBay every bearing I saw on uh, various websites so I would say at this point I have a really good understanding of bearings and how they affect spinners and how to install them and all that good stuff so uh, let me move this case out of the way. We'll tap into that. And uh, I'm just using this background right now because my desk is a mess, to be honest with you. So I just ended up grabbing this poster off the wall so that I could uh, do this video. So hopefully it's not too distracting. Maybe I'll grab this little pad that I use all the time and throw that on there in case that background's too distracting. Okay, so bearings. Okay, so you've got your bearing tool. Okay, this looks intimidating to a lot of people. It was actually intimidating to me too when I first saw it, but it's really, really simple. And uh, I'll show you guys how that works. But first, let me just cover kind of um, different types of spinners and you know different types of bearing systems. So this is an Axis Micro. This is a retention system. So if you take off the button, a retention system is when there's another piece that essentially screws in to keep the bearing in place. So as you can see, you've got that gold piece that screws down. There's a tool for this one. Some of them have tools. Some of them you can just kind of unscrew on your own, but this one has a tool. So if you want to take the bearing out, you just unscrew this and then you pop off this and then your bearing comes right out. See? Pops right out. So the advantages to this system is that you can easily swap bearings and especially with bearings like the one I'm using in here, this dark matter one, ceramic bearings are very uh, fragile. So when you try to install them in press fit spinners, you can break them oftentimes. Um, I broke a lot of ceramic bearings when I first got them, just being a meathead and just trying to squeeze it in a, squeeze it in a uh, spinner that didn't fit. And um, yeah, I broke a bunch of them. So, yeah, you can swap out bearings pretty quickly with uh, retention systems. Um, and then let's talk about the disadvantages. So with retention spinners, you've got specific buttons that really only work with retention spinners. So, for example, these buttons I have here kind of have that little extra step there. So it'll fit and it'll create, you know, that gap that's in there, if you can kind of see the gap. Um, this actually makes up the gap and you can screw it down and you know it'll work if I were to try to take like you know a different uh, button let's just grab like a random button here and see if we can screw it on there you'll kind of see what I'm talking about so if I grab this tungsten button from a different spinner if you see like I can't there's enough space to screw it down but then look ain't no spin happening right there you could shim it um, these are shims got some shims close by so if I were to put those shims around the outside I could create that step that I showed you on the last button so then the, then this button could be used on a retention spinner so I found with shims I'm pretty much able to get most buttons to fit on most of my retention spinners but it's not it's not a guarantee so that's retention style spinners um, I think I covered most of that now let's move on to a, uh, a press fit spinner. Um, okay, so a press fit spinner, for example, we'll just grab this guy right here. So actually I'm gonna grab this because I don't have a bearing in it right now, I don't think, so I could do an install. So this is a Unquiet Hands Abacus. And if I remember correctly, I snatched a bearing. Oh, actually it did install the bearing in this one earlier, but we'll still use this as an example. So a press fit spinner, is essentially exactly what it sounds like. This bearing is press fit into this hole. Um, and that's where this tool comes into play if you were to want to swap the bearing on it. So most uh, press fit spinners I've used, the hole is just you know tight enough where the bearing can be installed without you know any sort of glue or anything. But I do find that over time, you know, the more you use it, the, the bearing can become loose. So that's where either Loctite or 
um, this Aaron's glue that I got from uh, Unquiet Hands comes into play, where you can essentially like glue the bearing into the into the hole here. Uh, I don't believe I've glued this one, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove it. It is a ceramic bearing. I do try not to remove ceramic bearings when I can, but uh, I do have a bunch of these. These are actually Jonas's uh, from Modus Works um, uh, full ceramic bearings. They're really they're really sweet. Um, so okay, in order to get this to work, so. What you need is just one of the pieces. So for example, this piece uh, right here sits down on that and that's the right size. I think this one's too big. Yeah, see this one's too big so I couldn't use that one. So you just toss that one to the side. You put this one here. You, you drop your, uh, your tool there on the table. And then if you're trying to remove a, uh, a bearing, you just use the smallest one. And for this example, I'll just remove it and it's, it's, you could press another one on top of it, but let me not get ahead of it, just keep it simple. So if you wanna remove your bearing, you just screw this down until it's tight, and then you just wanna make sure that it's kinda of lined up, and then you just screw down. All right, screw this down, you hear the pop, bearing's out. So now you'll have the piece that pushed through, which is smaller, so that'll just, yeah, see it'll just slide through. So then you've got your bearing, so, okay. So if I wanted to reinstall this, same process. Uh, you just set that down there, set your bearing there, and then I use the larger one uh, so I don't push, I don't over push. Um, and then there's a rim side, so you've got this rim right here. You want to use that side facing down because it'll move with the the center of the spinner or the bearing, so that that way you're not putting all this pressure. Uh, on the outside, that's how I cracked a bunch of my spinners until, or my bearings until I realized that this is the way to do it. So, yeah, you just screw it down, and then you'll you know you'll feel it spin. And then what I like to do to make sure it's flush is once it's already going and it's in, I'll use the flat side because otherwise you can put over push. So now I'll use the flat side just to get it kind of squared away, and then boom, tighten it down a little bit. Boom, you're good to go. So that's a bearing install. Hopefully, um, hopefully that makes sense and was pretty straightforward. I know this tool looks intimidating, but it really isn't. It's pretty simple. Most this is if you had a 608 bearing, like one of the bigger ones. Um, so most of the time, you're going to use this and this. Okay, so I'm just going to put that back, stack that up, and put that back. And then I will talk about bearings in more detail. Okay, so let's grab my, let's throw all this to the side. Don't know why I had the Trillium sitting there. I guess I was gonna show the retention. You know, I should show the retention on the Trillium or the Billum actually has less stuff to unscrew. Where's my Billum? It's under here somewhere, hold on. Uh, screw it, we'll just use the Trillium. Um, so, oh, here it is. <coughs> so for this, uh, this is specific to this spinner. I haven't really seen a lot of spinners that uh, have this sort of retention system. But, oh, there goes a weight. Um, if you, this one is just kind of held in place by the by the body of the spinner, which is really cool. Um, it is a little bit of a process to get it out, but yeah. So the two little metal plates essentially come together. You can see there they come together, and then you can kind of do that, and then there's your bearing. So they just press fit over top here, snaps into place and then you screw everything back in. I'm not gonna do that all on camera and make you guys watch, but I'm gonna just get the button on here for now and then I'll reassemble it in a minute. Okay, throw that to the side. Scoop all of this to the side. And then we'll talk about bearings real quick. So you can see I got my little bearing case. I've got labels on them. Um, got a ton of bearings. So. All right, we'll start with uh, your ceramic bearing. So this is full ceramic. The balls are ceramic. The the outside um, and the cage is uh, ceramic. So this is a full ceramic uh, bearing. Uh, the advantages to these, I find, they're pretty fast. Um, they are fragile, so if you drop your spinner and have a ceramic in there, odds are it might break. Um, they have a nice like little whirling sound. It's not too aggressive, but uh, they're definitely some of my favorite. And then you've got your stainless bearings. So this one is actually stainless, and I always forget the acronym. It's like S3IV4, something like that. Um, 
I'm annoyed at myself for not actually writing that down or knowing it in advance. But yeah, so the balls are made out of a, I guess it's like a ceramic material. You can kind of see that they're little black ones in there. I don't know if you could pick that up on camera. But yeah, these are some of my favorite. These make a little bit more sound. I think this is actually a reptilian from Unquiet Hands. Um, but yeah, I like ceramic. I like ceramic bearings. I like stainless steel bearings. Um, I pretty much like all bearings unless they're quiet. Um, and then you've also got the criminals here. I know one of these is a criminal. This is a criminal from Modus. So you can see, hopefully, that the balls are ceramic in there. So they're white, unlike the S3i4s or whatever. I'm butchering that, but. Yeah, so these have ceramic bearings. Uh, the advantage of these, these ones are super smooth and pretty quiet. These are about as quiet as I will go. I don't really like quiet. I think quiet's boring, just like Jonah says. Um, so these are really fast and fairly quiet. If you like quiet, you'd probably, you'd probably like these. Uh, and then as far as noise goes, I should just clarify. Noise has a lot to do with the material. So this is running a criminal bearing in it, but it's pretty loud due to the Zerk, so see if you can hear that. You can hear the sound coming from that spinner. And then, for example, this is a uh, collision. This is in tungsten. When I had the stock button on here, it made no noise. Changing it to a Zerk button actually made it loud. So I can show you that real quick. Love that. That one has a uh, full ceramic in it. but. Yeah, this one got loud after I changed the button, and I noticed that with different spinners, different button materials will make different sounds. Uh, I find that the lighter buttons, like uh, Exotic Stuff or Zerk, they tend to make the best sound, or the most sound. Um, so there's that. Uh, real quick, back to the bearings. Um, then you've got your, these are my favorites. I think I've probably posted about these a couple times. These are the Dark Matters from Unquiet Hands. This is a uh, that same material, the S3i V4. Um, that's the body is made out of that. And then the balls are made out of that as well. And then you've got the, you know, the, the cage in the middle. I think it's called Peak is the name of the material or style. And uh, these are super fragile. That's the only downside to those is they're very fragile. Dust gets in them. You drop them. You push them too hard. Really easy to, to, to break those. Uh, then you've got your Acer bearings here. So these are Acer bearings. These uh, are the same balls as the S3 IV4, whatever. Um, but the cage is a little thinner. You can see like the profile around there is pretty thin. These are pretty loud. Um, they're not as fast. I, I mean, I guess they're as fast. I just feel like sometimes um, they feel a little slower than other bearings, but still really good. And then the rest of my bearings are kind of like just stuff I tried. Like these are stainless steel bearings. So this has like, you know, your stainless steel outer and then the balls you can see are kind of like shiny stainless steel. And then it's got like this uh, nylon backing back there. Um, these are good. I, I don't use them very often though. I don't know why, um, but they are good. Oh, and shielded bearings. Shielded bearings are a thing, so if you're worried about like dust and stuff getting in there and all that type of stuff, you can use shielded bearings. I find that shielded bearings, um, they while they're good, they're usually quiet because of the um, the shield over top. So, you know, like I always say, sound is everything to me, so I don't really use those shielded bearings. I just have them in case or just to try them out. Or if I go on a trip or something like that, sometimes I'll install ones because I know that maybe they'll get dirty or whatever and I won't have my stuff to change things out. Uh, another type of bearing you got are these like Golden Eagle ones. These are like uh, plated. Um, they do have this weird concave type of shape to them though and they don't fit in everything. I found that it's a really a hit or miss on if this is gonna fit in your spinner or not. So that's a word of warning on that one. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, I do have several other bearing types. As you can see, um, it's another one that has in, been installed in several of the spinners that I got. I don't really like it though. I usually take it out right away. I'm not a fan of that bearing, but yeah, this video is probably super long now. Um, didn't intend it to go this long, but I was trying to just clarify everything uh, regarding bearings and the tool and all that type of stuff. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to, to reach out, let me know, and uh, have a good one. Peace.